Awesome, nice, perfect. Um, please accept my gratitude, Ron. Thanks for this opportunity. And um, uh, thanks again for all of you who are on the call. Uh, this is Srini Pindiala, and a senior uh, you know, cloud solutions architect here at Redis. I come with about 25 plus years of experience in software application development and uh, so solution architecture. My greatest interests are you know, managing big data, distributed computing, and generative AI of late. And uh, I've been with Redis for the uh, for the last three years. And my at Redis, I exclusively focus um, with our partnership between uh, in Redis and AWS, obviously. Now, generally, you know, during my weekend party, right? You know, when I meet my friends, usually people ask me where I work, and I tell them that I work at Redis. And generally, usually, they say the natural reaction for them is that, oh, Redis, that uh, distributed, uh, you know, enterprise caching company. That is true. That you know, it is a distributed caching company, but Redis actually can do more than that. And of late, we are seeing that Redis is being highly leveraged in AI and ML space, primarily in the two areas. You know, one being uh, Redis being used as a feature store, and two as a vector database itself. Now, uh, to quickly you know, summarize what a feature store is all about, right? A feature in a ML pipeline is basically an attribute or a characteristic of data that's actually used as an input to your uh, machine learning model. And a feature store obviously is a service that actually ingests these large volumes of data, computes these features and stores them in a data store like Redis for you know, querying at ultra lightning speeds. So Redis is um, highly used as a feature store. The other uh, area where it's been highly leveraged is of late we are seeing is with Redis as a vector database. Now, before the chat GPTs of the world actually made this whole generative AI becoming a new hyped thing in, in the industry right now, Long back, two years back itself, Redis actually built the core vector database functionalities um, in a long back ago itself. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, now uh, in a generative AI is the new rage. Uh, obviously, Redis is also uh, being highly used as a vector database. Now, again, for those of you who are not completely new to this, a vector is nothing but a numerical representation of a binary data like, a, like an audio file or a text file or a video file or a graphic or a PDF file, whatever, right? And when that is being stored in a, in a if you go back to the fundamentals of mathematics in, in the school when we're doing our academics, right? Um, if you represent that as a vector and if and you need a data store to store that, and that is called a vector database. Now, a vector database is becoming a foundation for crafting these uh, next generative, uh, next generation generative AI applications. Now, the foundation of generative AI, right? As the name suggests, right? What generative AI is all about? It's basically it generates content. Oftentimes, the content is completely original, and the content type could be textual, videos, images, and whatever it may be, right? Now, you may wonder how does that applicable to me? So for somebody who's coming with uh, uh, from you know, working at a healthcare industry perspective, right? You now generative AI can be used to develop new drugs, can be uh, used to develop new treatments, have diagnosed new diseases, or, or you know have a personalized patient care. If you're coming from financial services industry background, it can be used to detect fraud. It can be used to you know predict market trends. It could be used to develop new financial products. If you're again coming from a retail industry standpoint, right? It can be used to recommend products to customers. Uh, to to you know personalize marketing campaigns to design new stores whatever and I mean I mean the sky, sky is the limit for you and the foundation of all that boils down to two things one is called foundation models and uh, second thing is called large language models now foundation models are nothing but the broader general purpose models that are aimed to capture you know broad range of knowledge and uh, they have been trained on tons and tons of data so that you can actually readopt re them this is this process is called a domain adoption. You can re-adopt those models for your business uh, use case. Now, obviously, large language models is a type of FMs um, that are exclusively um, focused on semantic uh, understanding of the textual data and then be able to solve uh, specific problems that you're trying to solve. So that's those are the foundations of that. Now, there are challenges uh, when it comes to actually designing your generative AI applications um, with LLMs, right? Um, and for example, an LLM trained on public knowledge naturally lacks access to domain-specific private data. Hence, the generated responses may be way too generic and may not actually solve your domain-specific challenges. Next, these LLMs may not produce the accurate or factual responses if they lack um, enough contextual data to reference, and it can lead to hallucinations, which means uh, generating you know, wrong responses to your questions that you're asking to these chatbot applications, for example. Also, it's... Um, 
computationally very, very expensive to retrain and uh, to re, you know, fine tune your LLM. And on top of these, um, these embedded uh, LLMs have a hard limit on the number of tokens that you can actually pass as a part of your query prompt. So hence, with all these limitations, um, the, the natural uh, way of, you know, one of the techniques that you could actually employ is called RAG. It's called a retrieval argumented generation. And uh, what this technique does is uh, basically on the fly, right, on the fly, while you're, for example, let's say you're, uh, you're designing a chatbot application. On the fly, you can actually pass your domain-specific contextual information to the LLM so that the LLM can actually answer specific questions and responses that is applicable to your business scenario, uh, like you know, retail industry or healthcare industry or whatsoever I was just talking about. So that is what is called RAG. And uh, um, um, so without further ado, actually, let me actually get into a product demo here. And that actually showcases how um, Redis as a vector database on Amazon's Bedrock platform can actually solve some of your business problems here. So let's actually dive into that. So let's look at the product demo of how AWS Bedrock platform leverages Redis Cloud as a vector database to employ a technique called RAG. RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. And we're going to look at this while crafting a Gen AI chatbot application. So here is how the process looks like. You have a data lake that actually houses your source documents in the form of unstructured data. You will then employ an embedding model basically to vectorize your source data and store all of that vectorized embeddings in your vector database like in this case Redis Cloud. So let's say we have a use case in a healthcare industry. Uh, and then let's assume that we are crafting a chatbot application for doctors. And let's pretend that the doctor asks a specific question to the application like this. What is the ICD-10 code used for common cold? Now, if we vectorize this question using an embedding model, then you can do a quick vector similarity search on your Redis Cloud Vector Database to retrieve the top K relevant search results. And these results can then be appended as an additional context that is part of your system prompt and it's passed as an input to the LLM, large language model. And then this large language model or LLM can then generate a more contextual response addressing challenges relevant to your business use case. Now this technique in, in simple words is called RAG or once again RAG stands for Retrieval Argumented Generation. Now if you imagine your org uh, having tons and tons of documents that are vectorized and stored in an external knowledge base backed by a vector database like Redis Cloud, you can actually derive business value out of your Gen AI applications by simply pointing your LLM or large language model to your external knowledge base. And you can do all of this without having to retrain or fine tuning your LLM. And that is the beauty and value of actually doing RAG. So let me show you all, all of this process on Amazon Bedrock platform with Redis Cloud as your knowledge base. We'll take an example of a use case from financial services industry this time. Let's say we are crafting a Gen AI chatbot application for a financial analyst. The setup involves an object store like S3 based data lake that basically houses all of the financial information like SEC filings, consolidated financial statements for companies like Alphabet, Apple, Intel, Microsoft and so on and so forth. So I have uploaded all of these documents into Amazon S3 and we will use this as a data source to vectorize the data and store it in the Redis cloud. Next we will set up a knowledge base in Amazon Bedrock with Redis Cloud as your vector database. Now the process is very simple. 
you click on the knowledge base in the left hand navigation bar and you click on create knowledge base give this a name set up uh, a few security IAM permissions and then next you will define the data source by giving it a name and then pointing it to the S3 bucket where we have all of our financial information of different companies in the form of PDF docs so that's the S3 URI to the data lake that uh, I'm configuring here next we will choose an embedding model in this case it's going to be Amazon's uh, Titan G1 embedding model this embedding model basically takes the input data from the S3 bucket reads all of the PDF files from the S3 bucket and divides these documents information into smaller chunks and then basically vectorizes each of these chunks and then stores each of these vector embeddings in the vector database in this case happens to be Redis Cloud so now we'll choose Redis Cloud as our vector database of choice we configure a few details such as credentials like username password TLS certifications certs etc and then basically um, we do all of this for the Redis Cloud endpoint and then configure the vector search index details in the bedrock UI. So this is where I'm actually creating a vector index in uh, Redis and I'm basically mapping that in bedrock platform. So the vector field the, and the other fields. Once you set up Redis Cloud as your vector database, now it's actually the time to actually create our chatbot agent application. We create an agent, give it a name again and a description. Then we're going to select a few again uh, IAM provisions and then we actually select a model. In this case, it's going to be an LLM model or large language model from Anthropic and the model we're going to choose is called Claude version 1. We'll go ahead and also mention specific instructions for this LLM to act as an agent specialized in answering questions around financial information for companies like Alphabet, Al Apple, etc. Then we will select uh, the knowledge base that we created using the Redis Cloud as a vector database and we will let this chatbot agent to use this knowledge base and um, we're going to click next. Once we review all of these configurations, we're going to go ahead and create this agent and the agent application is now ready to be tested in the bedrock playground and let's actually start asking a few questions so here is my first question to the LLM model what can you do for me the agent immediately thinks through and responds mentioning that it can actually provide financial information for companies such as Apple Alphabet etc let's ask a more deeper question I'm going to ask what are Apple's cash, cash equivalents and restricted cash beginning balances as of uh, December 31st, 2022? Again, the agent application on AWS Bedrock is going to think through this and then basically answers as of December 31st, 2022. Apple's cash, cash equivalents, restricted cash and balances is $24,977 million. Now, if you notice, there is a reference list next to this $24,977 amount. And if you hover your mouse on it, it exactly gives you the details of the PDF file from the data lake from which it actually got all of this information from. So the agent not only is answering the question, but it's also giving you a proof of contextual information from where it is actually got this information from. So let's actually double check if this information indeed is correct or not by opening the actual physical file from the data lake itself and as you can see in this PDF file that indeed the numbers actually match between what's there in the PDF file versus what the actual application quoted in this case happens to be $24,977 million. So that's the beauty of doing RAG with no retraining or finding tuning of your LLMs with the new data, you can actually pretty much derive business value by crafting these Gen AI applications. And all of this is possible on AWS Bedrock platform that's actually giving us the capability to access a wide variety of LLMs with just a simple API call combined with the power of vector database capabilities from Redis Cloud. 
So that's the rag in essence with uh, Redis Cloud on AWS for you all. Thank you.